Hi everyone, welcome to Anthony's Hobby Corner. Um, hope you're all keeping safe. Uh, on uh, today's video, I'm going to be doing a um, complete service and tune up on a um, River Rossi steam locomotive. This is a 284 Berkshire Perry Marquette uh, locomotive. Um, and uh, it's made by River Rossi. Um, I believe this this locomotive was uh, perhaps uh, manufactured somewhere uh, in the early 70s, I believe. Uh, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I, from based on the the other locomotives I do have, it seems like it's from the same era. Um, but obviously, it's in it's in very good shape uh, for its circa. Um, however, I'm, I, I purchased this actually uh, online um, and uh, about maybe three months ago uh, along with the other 2882 um, um, locomotive, that steam locomotive that I had uh, done a service on a previous video. Uh, but I thought it's time to now do a service on this one. So, um, as you can probably uh, aware, this one also has the the iconic River Rossi motor, uh, and I believe in this generation it does have the ball bearings, um, ball bearing bearings uh, on the uh, both the brush end and on the drive shaft end as well. So um, I won't be opening up the motor completely on this one as I did it on the previous video um, on that mallet that I serviced. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do a full overhaul, but I'm going to keep the motor as is, but lubricate the motor and clean the commutator, etc. All right, so uh, let's get going on this one, and let's see how she runs after. Now she this this locomotive does run, uh, but it doesn't. It's not the best. I mean, it just needs a thorough cleanup and stuff like that as well. So um, let's get about to doing that. So this locomotive actually has uh, two main screws that you need to remove to remove the shell. One here is disguised as part of the shell, pretty well disguised actually. And then there's one right back here, right underneath uh, behind the uh, trailing truck. Now I have a little parts tray here to keep all the parts. And I have a, a little container here to put the, the brushes in if I need to take them out and clean them up uh, in some solvent, uh, sorry, in some contact cleaner. There comes the shell. Now, obviously, I just have to uh, just have to pop out the, uh, the railings here. Sorry, the grab bars and out comes the shell and you can see there's a lot of little powder inside here um, and that is really uh, basically uh, I've, I've been told that was from the uh, disintegrated foam that was uh, as part of the uh, the box that it was sitting in so I'm gonna have to clean all that up I'll be cleaning up the shell with soap and water anyways later on so and there's a little bit of the foam has got into the motor section here as you can see uh, right uh, right around here so I'm gonna clean all that up as well but the motor seems to be in fairly good really good shape actually I'm seeing all over here it's all in very good shape um, so it's gonna be a uh, fairly easy service on this one
All right, so first step here is I'm going to um, remove the motor from here and uh, and clean it up. Actually, I don't think I have to even remove the motor on this case because um, it seems to be very clean. I'm just going to take all this gunk out of here and then lubricate the bearings and clean the um, commutator, obviously. Um, I think this one would be good to go. Alright, so let me just take a little brush here and uh, clean out all the uh, the foam residue that's here. And this motor does have the ball bearings on both sides, I recognize the configuration. So uh, it's going to be a little careful with these ones. Once you open up the motor, the ball bearings start flying all over the place. You have to be really careful. But you, you can see how I tackled that with on the uh, 2882 mallet that I did in the previous video, if you're interested in seeing how to open up the motor. Okay, the motor's fairly clean. Well, a lot of foam in here. You can see the disintegrated, disintegrated foam in here. All right. So I'm going to clean the commutator first. Don't know if I need to clean the brushes. Uh, maybe I will take them out. Give them a quick clean. Okay. So for the brushes, I just gotta pop the spring out. From both of those. Hopefully. So here's a carbon brush. Now River Rossi is typically the older motors, they have one carbon brush and one copper brush. I guess the intent really here is to have the copper clean the copper commutator um, in the process of conducting electricity. I guess that's their perhaps their rationale, but either way. They usually have one of both. The copper brush is actually a, a thin rolled, a rolled thin uh, copper mesh that's put together. So I'm putting the uh, brush in a little container here. Let me get the copper brush out as well. There is the copper brush, as you can see. Uh, got some quite a bit of gunk on it, but it's just a rolled copper mesh. I put them both this little thing here and uh, put some contact cleaner let it just soak and get the gunk out of there while that soaks now I can get ex I can actually put a, um, a cotton bud through here and also clean the commutator as well so let me just get one of those slim, co uh, slim cotton buds. All right, so I got these really slim cotton buds that can actually go into uh, the openings where the um, the uh, brushes go in, and I can also fit it in here and clean the side of the commutator as well. And I'm only doing this because I'm not opening up the motor this time on this locomotive. gunk in this one.
that's a lot of dirt right there. Not as bad as some others that I've seen. Um, but uh, anyways, that's uh, fairly clean. Let me just use this end as well and give it a good clean here. Yeah, it's not as bad now. Alright, that one's pretty clean. Oh yeah, it's nice and clean. You can see the copper shining through the uh, through the uh, commutator holes there, so through the uh, yeah. Alright, so now I'm going to lubricate uh, Create uh, both ends of the motor. So this is the drive shaft, the shaft into the motor, um, uh, and the uh, and the brush into the motor. And the brush into the motor is very easy, as you can see. There's a little pinhole here uh, by the uh, um, by the um, ball bearing housing. So all you got to do is put your uh, lubrication inside there with a needle and it'll lubricate the ball bearings inside. Alright, so let's put some lubricant on there. Uh, so I use Hobby Lube Premium Medium Oil. I mean, I do have light as well, but this is like general purpose oil. It works very well. There. Of course, a little bit up there. Move the shaft a bit. And then. Okay. Now for the back here, as you can see, make sure the camera has a good view here. Basically, put this needle in here. Make sure my lubrication is almost at the needle tip. Now, since it got clogged, there we go. Okay, so here's the needle. Uh, I'm just gonna put this right into here, it goes right in. Squeeze some lubrication and then take it out. And that will lubricate the bearings on the on the uh, brush end. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit more contact cleaner right now and just clean up the commutator again just to make sure that there is no oil residue that might have gone onto the commutator as part of lubricating the, um, the bearing by the brush ends. Okay. Yep, looks nice and clean. All right, I think we're good with the motor. Now I'm going to check the uh, the 90 degree transmission here um, and make sure that one's well lubricated it seems like it is but let's just make let's let's take a look inside now you got to be careful with with this because I've heard some of the older versions may have ball bearings on the transmission as well but um, I don't believe this one does so There's a lot of residue here, so that means there's been a lot of lubrication put into this thing at some point. And uh, these are awesome transmissions, and these are built so well with 
bushings on both ends and metal drive shafts and, 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 a, and a brass um, worm gear inside here as, as well. So let's take a look at this one. Now this one's just split open here. A little bit of a assistance. Let's go around. Yep, and this one just has the bushings in it on both ends, as you can see, and a worm gear and uh, a 90 degree shaft, and it seems to be well lubricated, so I'm just going to put just a dab of white lithium grease in here, just a little dab. Um, Oil by the uh, bushings. Okay. There's the old gunk there, I'm just removing the old dirt. Nice and clean. Alright, let's put the transmission back together. slot. Notice there's a little slot here on the transmission on the, on the drive sh on the shaft that's got to line up with the uh, coupler at the bottom end there. back yep. we're good all right so that's all we really have to do inside here is just really to uh, to clean up the uh, um, the 90 degree transmission here, make sure that there's no gunk inside. It seemed pretty clean. Just put some lubrication on there, and on the motor as well. Just put some fresh lubrication on the motor as well, on both bearing ends, and clean the commutator. I think we're good. I'm gonna put the brushes in at the last, at the end. Or maybe I can put it in now. Actually, might as well. Uh, there they are. Need to uh, so take the copper brush. I'm 
that goes in here. I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. It goes in there. And then we take the uh, the carbon brush and the end that has a little hole on it that's the end that sticks out of the motor and of course you can see the uh, the worn out part here that goes um, goes inside the motor like so and now we just line the springs right back I use this old dental pick um, to basically do this because I find it's very very easy and useful There you go, and there you go. The brushes are in. Don't need this anymore, guys. Oh, it's a little mucky, murky. All right, so I think we got the top part here. Now we're just going to uh, flip it over and work on the bottom here. So this whole thing, I'd like to take it out and clean it out because there's a lot of gunk in here. Um, so you just gotta uh, this. Okay, sure we can take this one out. Actually, you know what? Before I before I separate this, I see a lot of this uh, disintegrated foam. I'm gonna kind of brush this stuff out here. All right, I was able to find some compressed air, so I'm just going to put some in here. Okay, then that should do it. So before I uh, pull this out, I'm going to actually clean this one with soap and water. Uh, as you can see, it's quite dirty. Um, and you'll see a vast difference once we clean it up. So why am I cleaning this now is because this will then dry by the time I finish cleaning up the, uh, uh, the drivetrain here. So well, let me just get some soap and water here and start cleaning this up. So I just have some dishwashing soap here um, and and water. Just just going to uh, dab some of this on the uh, shell. And dishwashing soap is just is very mild on uh, on these shells. It doesn't impact the paint or anything. I don't like using any kind of solvents or any kind of harsh chemicals. There really is no need for that because um, most of the dirt that you actually get on the locomotives, unless they've been really abused um, in harsh conditions, or are just, uh, you know, just surface dirt that you can easily uh, remove with a, a brush and uh, some soap and water. And uh, here it is, nice and clean, but let me just actually dab it with some paper towel here to clean the insides and help it dry all right we're gonna set this aside and let it dry okay I think I need to put some soap and water on these running boards here as well. It's kind of dirty at the bottom here as well. Yeah, but uh, well, in any case, let me just uh, do that now as well. I have the brush. So here I got to be a little bit more careful because I got I got the drive train here, so I'm just going to be very careful with the bottom. Or maybe I'll remove the drivetrain first, actually. Yeah, perhaps I'll do that. Well, 
Okay, so let's clean the drivetrain here. So the long screw goes towards the front trailing track and the small screw goes in the center. Small screw there. And there it is. Okay. There is some gunk inside here as well, so I'm going to use the uh, okay, it looks fairly clean. going to put some lubrication here on the drive now on this drive here as you can see um, the gear is actually exposed you may not be able to see it properly but uh, because my lighting is not the best uh, but uh, the gear on this bottom drive is actually exposed here so you can actually lubricate the, 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 the drive without having to take this whole thing out so I'm just going to uh, I'll lubricate that it looks fairly clean and I'm also going to put uh, some lubrication on the bearings each of the bearings as well um, above, uh, white lithium on here so I really need I'm just going to the motor a bit so the grease goes in to the worm gear inside okay so now let me just clean these up first before I put them back Using some contact cleaner to clean up the wheels here. Uh, notice some uh, some gunk here by the uh, and also you need to clean the contact the wipers here. Um, there's um, two wipers on the um, on the trailing truck. You need to clean that as well. I'm just going to clean the shaft and then rotate it, and it'll automatically put the put the uh, the cleaner onto the wiper as well. Looks pretty good. Put that aside. Now we're going to clean the uh, bottom plate of the, the drive uh, drive train. A lot of gunk in here usually and it's 
one thing I really like about river horses is that they're kind of over engineered they've got everything's metal here and stuff like that most locomotives you just see them plastic and they, they warp with the year through, through, through the years and crack and break and these things are solid just keep going and going but it's pretty clean I'm just gonna clean the trailing wheels now as well uh, Alright, the trailing wheels are clean too. Just gonna put some lubrication here on the trailing trucks here, on the bearing. That's it. Oh yeah, it's very smooth. Put some lubrication on here as well. These two can be kept aside because they're clean. Alright, now we're going to put some lubrication on here and also going to clean the, uh, the wheels here as well. Okay, the wheels aren't too clean, too dirty. Alright, okay, so now all we're going to do is lubricate the bearings and then put this back on the front and rear trailing trucks and the plate back on, um, and then we can lubricate the, the linkage. But um, alright, so let's do that. That's it, just a little dab. Alright, now I'm just going to put a little bit of soap and water and clean the, the, the residue on the plastic shell here. Um, and then we can just put some lubrication on the linkages and we'll be good to go. So here's just for reference you can see uh, the shell is now dried and you can see how much more nicer it looks uh, and cleaner than it was before. to actually put the shell back on so the uh, bearings on the main wheels were drive wheels were lubricated um, the drive uh, 90 degree mechanism a drive uh, transmission was lubricated inside uh, the wheels have been cleaned so have the, the trailing and leading trucks have been cleaned as well the shell is looking much cleaner now 
uh, the 90 degree on this side has been cleaned as well and lubricated uh, so as be, as well as the motor all right so now all we have to do is put the shell back and then lubricate the linkage Snap the uh, grab irons back. Okay, and the shell's back on. All right, and now we can lubricate all the linkage because this locomotive has a ton of linkage in here. It's important to keep those lubricated as well. And all they need is just a little dab of uh, oil. Alright, so now we have now we have one fully serviced um, 284 Berkshire locomotive by River Rossi. Um, they uh, they are very hard to maintain. They're very simple to maintain um, and keep running. And uh, now we just have to clean the. Uh, uh, the tender, tender is all dirty as well. I'm just going to put some soap. I'm going to clean the, the wheels as well on the tender. Uh, make sure they have good uh, good contact as well. As you can see, there are wipers on these wheels. They're obviously picking up one of the polarities and transmitting it through this pin over to the drawbar at the back here. Uh, and the other opposite polarity is picked up from the locomotive. So these river rosses will not run with just with the locomotive by itself. You've got to have the tender attached to it. All right. Well, I'm just going to clean the uh, the tender wheels up. Uh, there's nothing nothing unique to be shown there, and just put some soap and water on the tender, and uh, we're good to go. So next, I guess I'll uh, uh, we'll take this over to the track once I clean up the tender, and let's see how it runs. Hey everyone. Okay, so we're at the track here. I'm just going to uh, get the locomotive on the uh, track. Yep, I think we're good. And uh, let's see how she runs. There she goes. For a locomotive from the 70s, I think it's uh, doing a pretty good job. These river Rossies are pretty bulletproof I mean their motors are solid uh, if you maintain them uh, the linkages are very strong uh, they're well built um, a lot of metal in them as well so uh, you know if you maintain them they'll just keep going and going and going 
so. Just do one more loop here and then uh, I'll shut it down. Oh, it's crawled pretty well as well. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, here's a close-up of it. It looks much cleaner and nicer now. I need to put a new coupler on here. The coupler is broken. But other than that, it's, it looks much fresher now with all the dirt being cleaned out. Great, well I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me through the comment section and I'll be more than happy to uh, uh, respond. Have a great day.